What is up folks, you're with Budget Monk and welcome to my How to Owners by Zen Team tutorial here in the patch 1.28, the Spanish update. This strategy is going to allow you to defeat the Ottoman Empire extremely quickly and decisively and allow you to have a meteoric rise as the nation of Byzantium, setting your game off on the right foot. Despite the fact that this only takes over the course of about two years in game, we are going to be playing slow and very deliberately and we are actually going to be working for this, which at least will give you guys that nice feeling of accomplishment once you complete this strategy. So with no more further ado, we're going to begin by actually deleting the fort in Moria for five financial reasons I'm going to improve the development of a cheer in order to be able to actually add it to the burgers upon adding it to the burgers we're going to be taking the admiral from the burgers estate as well as taking monarch points from both the nobility and the burgers next up we're actually going to be turning our army maintenance down recruiting more troops from each of our southern Grecian provinces as well as allying Theodora for example who is almost always going to be an available ally option in the beginning of the game. I'm going to improve my relations with Albania which is key and also the Mamelukes and then begin building a spy network inside of the Ottoman Empire which makes a small difference as well. At the end of the first, first month ticking by, I'm actually going to retract one of my diplomats and then go ahead and guarantee Albania and uh, before the month ends, I'm going to go ahead and put that diplomat back to work on its previous tasks, like fabricating the spy network. This is going to allow us to actually improve relations with Albania that much sooner and acquire that alliance that much sooner. The key to actually acquiring the alliance with Albania here at such a extremely early stage is the fact that I'm spamming units. In fact, I'm going to be exhausting almost all of my manpower spamming units here to build up my force limit. There is quite a frustrating aspect of uh, Athens, something that he actually does, which is he deletes his own units if you station your troops there, as well as uh, recruit many different troops there. And one way to actually avoid this is we're going to be stationing our troops inside of Achia, as well as actually recruiting one unit at a time inside of Athens. Um, using a little tactic here, when my unit is near completion, I turn my army maintenance up so that I can actually move him out from Athens and then I turn my army maintenance back down before the end of the month so that I'm not paying for the unit. Every little thing like that is going to be important here with this strategy as it's all going down right from the onset of the game. Now also around uh, halfway through January we're going to be recruiting our first unit inside of Constantinople and it's very important to understand that when this unit finishes your army maintenance must be in ze on zero because if you have a fully maintained unit here then the fort in Anatolia on the other side of the strait is actually going to be maintained by the Ottomans and this is something that we're going to avoid. So, so far in southern Greece we've been spamming units in all three provinces and it's around April that our second unit inside Athens is going to finish where we're going to be maintaining the unit so that we can actually move it outside of Athens but it is around April where we're going to be turning our army maintenance up in general so from this point onwards your army maintenance should be up and it's actually the next month May where things are really going to go down but you should have acquired Albania as an ally by this time primarily the main thing that makes us plausible as well as improving relations with him is the uh, fact that your army strength is increasing so much as you go over your force limit but as the time ticks on towards May this is where we're going to begin to be really serious and that includes pulling my little light ship back to be accumulated with the rest of my fleet and uh, we do actually want to be protecting trade up until this point primarily because it's going to actually provide some vision which is important I'll elaborate in a moment why that is so at this stage you should have around 17 regiments guys which is well over your force limit and needless to say that we've been actually loaning and debting up to uh, maintain this continual spam we're going to go ahead and be moving our troops into Achia in particular we don't actually want to move them into towards Athens uh, before the end of the month because like I said Athens can go ahead and delete his units which is extremely obnoxious I do have one unit there stationed in Athens ready to attempt to actually attach the Athenian army as soon as the month actually ticks over to June this is the month in which we're actually going to be declaring war now admittedly I did make a small error here where I should be moving my units from Achaea to Athens here before the end of the month so that they arrive in the beginning of June however it's not a crisis situation because I do have the unit there which can actually comfortably reach Selenik if that's the appropriate way to pronounce the province name uh, in Macedonia reaching the, the fort before the garrison actually uh, reinforces at the end of the month of June 
Now I've paused it here because there's something very important to take note of regarding this little five stack here. We wish to identify that the five stack here is on the Anatolian side before actually declaring the war. And this is why we're actually going to be using our light ships to just protect trade in the first uh, starting months because we'll actually provide some vision there with the uh, ships out at sea. Now if you do in fact not see the 5k stack here then it means that they are instead going to be located in this province. This can definitely cause some problems because it means that they can end up hindering you in the fort around Macedonia and actually prevent you from getting there before the end of the month as you do not wish to engage the Ottoman troops. So in order to help alleviate this situation you're going to actually detach one of your little regiments here and send them into this province and that's going to help provoke that unit to actually attack them as the Ottomans actually have better vision within southern Greece than you do on them within that mountains area of uh, Greece and Macedonia. Thankfully in my case they're on the Anatolian side and you guys should breathe a little small sigh of relief if they are on that side because it just makes things a little bit less complicated. One other thing that is crucially important here in the beginning of the scenario as we declare war on the Ottomans is your naval game. Your navy should be docked with inside of this province and just before the beginning of June and the beginning of the declaration of this war we'll be disembarking into that GNC where it is currently now. And the reason is to protect our little one regiment here which is going to be crossing the strait over to the Anatolian side as soon as we declare this war. There are cheeky little light ships here protecting trade by the Ottomans which will actually prevent you from crossing if you're not careful so we're actually going to be blocking them out and hopefully picking off those light ships themselves potentially stealing one for our own side. Otherwise the plan is pretty straightforward, we're just going to be trying to acquire both of these forts before the end of the month and the garrison actually grows. So I'm just going to be speeding things up just a tad here as we cross the strait and uh, you can see here we successfully defend our crossing, getting onto both forts here before the end of the month. I'm going to go ahead and try to now blockade the strait as I own both sides and one of my priorities is going to be to use some troops to actually occupy the Anatolian provinces in particular bigger there which is going to allow us to blockade the strait so that he cannot actually cross over and uh, reinforce the Anatolian side. So you can see the little 5k coming for my 1k here but it's no problem as I am able to acquire the occupation which you should do yourself. So we do have 1k casualty but it's no problem. And we're also receiving subsidies from the Mamluks here and this is why I have been improving relations with him to help incentivize him to actually give us those subsidies. There's one other thing that's absolutely crucially important to do here in the beginning of the game. As uh, you can see the Ottomans are basically just flooding Constantinople and standing on the province. The reason they accumulate there is because we actually have a large amount of troops ourselves to where one of the individual stacks is intimidated and the other one actually has low morale due to trilling. So they're going to go ahead and just chuck everything in against Constantinople and it's very important that you guys pass the edict of fort defense. This is going to help counteract the Ottoman bonus in the first age and it's actually going to make them progress at a normal speed when sieging down Constantinople. Now I did make a small error here and it did take me some time before actually applying that edict myself. Make sure that you guys go ahead and do it right on the onset of this war. Now due to the fact that the Ottomans have the vast majority of their troops inside of Constantinople and they're actually not progressing well because they aren't able to blockade the strait, you are able to absolutely smash the Ottoman Empire in a 1v1 type of scenario uh, due to this. The idea is to acquire those two forts and then just carpet siege down the rest of his country having an emphasis and focus on his coastal provinces so that he doesn't actually recruit that many additional fleet naval units. Needless to say however the Ottomans are not alone they are allied to the Crimea. So I chose to take footage here of where he was allied to the Crimea as it's more difficult. This entire strategy is actually predicated upon pulling Albania in whilst rushing down the war effort against the Ottomans. And Albania the major thing he's actually doing for us is in fact not Skanderbeg but he's actually contributing navy which allows us to actually win the naval game despite the fact that we're fighting Crimea's navy. Do you guys get it? If he was for example allied to AQ you would have absolutely absolutely no sea issues with the help of the Albanian fleet and you'd be able to blockade the strait with no problem whatsoever. Now in either scenario we're going to be wanting to separate pieces ally ASAP. So for example if he was allied to AQ upon taking the fort inside of Macedonia we're going to go ahead and use our little transports to actually as quickly as possible transport all of our army with the exception of our attached Athenian and attached Albanian troops over to the Anatolian side. 
in that case, as long as you blockade the straight and the Ottomans cannot reinforce, you're just going to go ahead and crush the AQ troops and get access through the Crimea. You're going to walk over to AQ, occupy his provinces, sit on his capital city and just white piece him. You won't actually even need to wait until his fort is sieged down. But in our case, of course, we're only going to designate about 8k troops over to deal with the Anatolian side because there's not going to be a threat over there that is going to re-siege those provinces. And instead, we're going to be walking up and focusing, having an emphasis on the Crimea themselves. We want to take the same approach where we occupy each of his provinces and sit on his capital city. As he's a larger nation, he's actually going to despise having each one of his provinces occupied. And you'll notice here from my footage that you can actually separate peace him without even dealing with his troops whatsoever. Now as we come towards the end of this video guys you're going to see that the Ottomans come very close to occupying Constantinople but I just want to make it clear that I'm being very reckless here. I've been able to piece out the Crimea for a little while like I was blockading uh, his capital city and uh, I'm choosing instead to push on and actually take some uh, war reparations and so on from him. And I'm also greedy not only in the Crimean piece out but also the Ottoman piece out as well. Now like I said the Ottomans do come close to acquiring Constantinople but of course um, I did apply the defensive edict at a late date and I just want to assure you guys that this is in fact doable. Although this is a lot of footage and it looks like it's a lot of time, keep in mind that I'm playing extremely slowly and in game terms it's not long. You know we did take those forts within one month so each of these occupations has been one month. This entire strategy is predicated upon occupying a separate piecing his ally and occupying the vast majority of his entire country before he occupies Constantinople and it is in fact doable. My previous video was somewhat similar to this and a lot of people were saying that I was lucky. I assure you that this is predominantly skill based. It's about rushing him down before he takes your capital and you will see from yourself that it is predominantly skill based. If you make mistakes it's going to cost you a lot. Otherwise you're going to go ahead and you're going to hog smash the Ottomans taking his cash of course which is going to help you repay those loans and the major emphasis of this strategy is that it has only been two years that is a hugely decisive victory over the ottoman empire and going to get this game off to a good start so this was paused and uh, sped up at some stages guys but you can see that this was all done in one take uh it was a pretty different style of video here on my channel but i did want to go through each in particular thing as they're going to make a huge difference Every single thing is going to be huge in regards to pulling off this strategy. Uh, the good news, of course, is this is right in the beginning of the game. If you guys are struggling with one particular aspect, like, for example, the 5k being on the Grecian side, which can be quite frustrating, of course, you have the ability to just start and start again, that kind of thing. Most of the Byzantium videos are predicated upon start again until you know so and so occurs like he attacks albania but we try to keep it a little bit higher level here on my channel but with that being said um, of course you can always take that approach i hope that this has given you guys enough information to pull off the strategy it does genuinely wor work and it is genuinely rewarding and quite frankly it is better than the vast majority of strategies because of how quick and decisive it is Either way guys, if you're like myself, you've been in this kind of situation before where you've played Byzantium and you've uh, reconquested your land, you're feeling good about yourself, but what you might find is that the Ottomans are still very challenging, right? The amount of land that they have, the opportunities that they have during your truce time is sometimes greater, and you might find that once it's time to fight them in your second war, that they're very difficult to deal with. Uh, if you guys want to have a tip and a strategy on how to absolutely obliterate the Ottoman Empire from this point onwards, a huge power play, which is going to ensure that your game continues to have this kind of meteoric rise, then make sure to stay tuned to the second part of this video where I'm going to show you guys a continuation strategy of what you should be doing at this point. But that will be in the part two. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching and best of luck to you guys. Uh, make sure to follow my links down below if you guys want to join my Discord channel as well as watch me stream as I'm going to be live streaming as of uh, 2019. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.